When verifying a conscious hospital patient's identity, the phlebotomist should a. Ask the patient's name and room number. b. Ask the patient to state their name and date of birth, and compare with wristband. c. Read the name from the wristband and assume it is correct. d. Ask a family member to confirm the patient's name. Answer, b. The standard protocol is to use at least two identifiers, typically full name and date of birth, verified with the wristband. Which of the following is an unacceptable patient identifier? A. Full name. B. Social security number. C. Room number. D. Medical record number. Answer, C. Room numbers can change and are not reliable for identification. Before drawing blood, the phlebotomist notices the patient is wearing a mask and unable to speak clearly. What should be done? A. Skip identification. B. Ask another patient to confirm. C. Ask the nurse and verify with ID wristband. D. Remove the patient's mask. Answer, C. Verifying with staff and matching the ID band ensures safety and protocol adherence. A patient tells you their name is spelled incorrectly on the requisition form. What do you do? A. Correct the spelling manually. B. Verify with a nurse and resolve the error before proceeding. C. Draw the blood using the incorrect name. D. Cancel the draw. Answer, B. Never proceed without verifying correct patient data. What is the first action after entering a patient's room for specimen collection? A. Start preparing equipment. B. Sanitize hands and introduce yourself. C. Ask the patient about fasting. D. Check the patient's wristband. Answer, B. Hygiene and patient introduction are first steps in ensuring safety and comfort. In outpatient settings, how should you verify identity? A. Rely on verbal confirmation. B. Use a driver's license and date of birth. C. Ask the receptionist. D. Use insurance details only. Answer, B. Photo ID and DOB are the most secure identifiers in outpatient collection. For a pediatric patient who is nonverbal, which identifier is most appropriate? A. Ask the parent slash guardian and confirm wristband. B. Ask the child to write their name. C. Use room number. D. Use parent's name. Answer, A. Guardians can provide information, which must be confirmed by patient ID band. Which of the following scenarios requires extra caution during patient ID? A. ICU patient on a ventilator. B. Routine outpatient visit. C. Pediatric clinic check-in. D. Emergency department self-check-in. Answer, A. Ventilated patients cannot speak, so wristband and staff verification are essential. What is the best response if the patient says, that's not my birth date? A. Apologize and recheck wristband and requisition. B. Continue without checking. C. Ask if they remember the right one. D. Skip and note the discrepancy. Answer, A. Any mismatch requires re-verification before drawing. You are collecting blood from a nursing home patient who is asleep. What should you do? A. Proceed quietly. B. Wake the patient, explain, and verify identity. C. Ask another resident for ID. D. Ask the staff and label the specimen before drawing. Answer, B. Consent and identity must be verified even if the patient is asleep. A patient's wristband is missing. What is the proper action before blood draw? A. Ask the patient for their ID. B. Proceed using the requisition only. C. Notify a nurse and do not draw until ID is replaced. D. Use the room number. Answer. C. Never draw blood if the wristband is missing, ID must be confirmed and present. Which situation is most at risk for patient misidentification? A. Outpatient with valid ID. 
B. Two patients in same room with similar names. C. Emergency draw with nurse supervision. D. Patient confirming their birth date. Answer, B. Similar names in shared rooms are high risk for ID errors. Use full identifiers carefully. What should be done if a patient's name on the lab order and wristband match, but the DOB does not? A. Proceed if name matches. B. Ask the physician for clarification. C. Do not proceed until the discrepancy is resolved. D. Use your judgment. Answer, C. Both name and DOB must match exactly. Errors require resolution before drawing. Which approach is least recommended for verifying identity? A. Ask for full name and DOB. B. Use barcode scanning and ID band. C. Ask the patient are you John Smith? D. Compare ID band and requisition. Answer, C. Leading questions like are you, can cause confirmation bias, always ask open-ended. What is the best way to confirm patient identity in a home draw scenario? A. Use patient's address and verbal confirmation. B. Ask for insurance card. C. Call the doctor's office. D. Ask for passport. Answer, A. In home settings, verbal confirmation with address or DOB is acceptable when no ID band is used. What must be done before drawing from an unconscious ER patient with no ID? A. Use a temporary ID and document per protocol. B. Wait for family. C. Draw blood and label later. D. Use emergency code only. Answer, A. Emergency protocols require temporary ID with full documentation. A nurse hands you pre-labeled tubes and asks you to draw from a patient. What should you do? A. Accept the tubes and draw. B. Label tubes after collection in front of patient. C. Ask the nurse to label them. D. Use the pre-labeled tubes. Answer, B. Tubes must always be labeled after collection and in the presence of the patient. What's the most common cause of ID-related errors in phlebotomy? A. Mislabeling specimens. B. Poor technique. C. Wrong tube selection. D. Vein misidentification. Answer, A. Mislabeling is the leading cause of patient identification errors in lab settings. When should the tubes be labeled after venipuncture? A. Before entering the patient's room. B. Immediately after collection, in front of patient. C. At the nurse's station. D. Before collection. Answer, B. Labeling must be done immediately after draw and in patient's presence to prevent errors. A Spanish-speaking patient nods at all your questions but doesn't seem to understand. What's the best next step? A. Proceed carefully. B. Get a qualified medical interpreter. C. Ask the family to translate. D. Speak louder and slower. Answer, B. Language barriers require certified interpreters for consent and safety. A phlebotomist must never collect blood on a patient who A. Has fainted before. B. Is asleep. C. Has no visible ID band. D. Refuses to fast. Answer, C. Patient identification is non-negotiable. No ID band means no draw. What identifier should be avoided in all settings? A. Date of birth. B. Social security number. C. Room number. D. Full legal name. Answer, C. Room numbers can change and are not considered reliable patient identifiers. When a patient has multiple ID wristbands, the phlebotomist should A. Choose the one that looks most recent. B. Match all identifiers across the bands and requisition. C. Use whichever is easier to read. D. Ignore the extras. Answer, B. All wristbands must be cross-verified with the lab order before proceeding. During identification, what error might occur with patients wearing hearing aids? A. Mislabeling the tubes. B. 
b. Mishearing questions c. Incorrect order of draw d. Excessive bleeding Answer, b. Patients with hearing loss may mishear questions. Clarity is crucial in ID. Which step is most important in preventing transfusion-related phlebotomy errors? A. Fasting confirmation B. Using smallest needle C. Strict ID matching before labeling specimens D. Centrifuge calibration Answer, C. Patient ID is critical in transfusion testing, mismatched samples can be fatal. Which of the following situations indicates the highest risk for misidentification? A. Pediatric outpatient clinic B. Nursing home during night shift C. Busy emergency department with unconscious patients D. Mobile blood draw event Answer, C. Emergency settings with unconscious patients carry a high risk due to urgency and lack of identifiers. Before drawing a presurgical patient who is sedated but responsive, you should A. Ask for verbal confirmation only B. Confirm with nurse and ID band C. Wake the patient fully D. Cancel the test Answer, B. Sedated patients require extra caution, verify with both staff and wristband. If a patient insists that their name on the ID band is incorrect, what must you do? A. Draw and document the complaint. B. Ask another patient. C. Stop and resolve the issue with nursing or admissions. D. Correct it manually. Answer. C. Never proceed with conflicting ID, report and resolve the discrepancy before proceeding. In phlebotomy, positive patient identification means A. Using full name and room number B. Confirming identity with at least two reliable sources C. Drawing blood while the patient is present D. Matching insurance information Answer, B. Two reliable identifiers such as name and DOB ensure correct patient identification. When a specimen is collected in the wrong patient's name but the sample is viable, the phlebotomist must A. Label it correctly. B. Notify supervisor and follow incident protocol. C. Use it anyway. D. Freeze the sample. Answer, B. Misidentified specimens must never be relabeled, they must be discarded and incident reported.